Hello there future DCs, this is Vishnu Vijay, a proud friend drama and I am here to help you with some tips and tricks that you can use for your audit and assurance exam. So, when it comes to the audit and assurance exam, there are some do's as well as some don'ts. What are these? Let's take a look at that, shall we? First of all, let's take a look at the things that you should do in the exam. First thing first, basically you have to bring your exam docket as well as national ID as well as calculator to the exam. And of course, even if you don't have the calculator, that's fine because you will be provided with both a standard as well as a scientific calculator within the CBE workspace itself. However, if you're comfortable when doing the calculations in your own calculator, then that's fine as well. Okay, folks. And of course, if you're attending the remote exam sessions, then so make sure that all those system requirements are met. And of course, the internet connections and various other aspects are in place for, so that you can smoothly write your exam as well without any technical issues. Now, moving on to the more exam specific aspects, you should structure your answer whenever you're writing it. Okay, folks, of course, when it comes to audit risk questions or internal control questions, there will obviously be a table provided to you, isn't it? However, structure your answer in paragraphs. Okay, folks, even when you're writing an audit risk, structure your answer using uh, the identification and explanation aspects separately and the impact on financial statements separately as well. And of course, when you're writing especially direct theory questions, provide headings and subheadings wherever necessary okay folks so that is an efficient way of presenting your answer in a wonderful manner okay folks so use subheadings and uh, headings wherever necessary and of course structure your answer using white spaces as well okay folks another aspect that you have to keep in mind is the use of professional language Okay, folks, use professional language when writing your exam. And of course, try to use the audit related keywords as well. Such as when you say evidence, you say sufficient and appropriate evidence, isn't it? And of course, there are some audit related terminologies that you've learned throughout the syllabus. So try to incorporate those terminologies within your answer as well. This gives the examiner the impression that you have, you definitely have a great level of knowledge regarding the audit standards and various other concepts as well. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. And of course, finally, and this is a really important point, and it's kind of an obvious point as well. It is basically to keep an eye on the time. Time management is an issue, a serious issue that a lot of students face when it comes to the audit and national exam. So you should strictly have a time strategy in mind, and you should strictly keep up with that particular time strategy as well. Okay, folks, that is one of the efficient ways to tackle the exam and complete the audit and national exam on time. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So that's all about the do's in the exam. So what are the things that you should not do? Let's take a look at that, shall we? Mm, seems you're liking this video. If yes, then why don't you subscribe to our channel, then Tram Global and press the bell icon. Also do press the like, it really motivates us and share it with all your friends who would love to watch this. So when it comes to the don'ts, we have quite a few list of items as well. First of all, you should not spend too much time on one particular question. Okay, folks, you have to completely attend each and every question and that's a mandatory requirement in the exam, isn't it? So appropriately follow the time strategy. Okay, folks, strictly follow the time strategy that you had in mind and move on after the allotted time is over for one particular question. Okay, folks, so remember that. Now, moving on to the next aspect that is using the word check in your answer. Now, this is a common mistake that a lot of students make, especially when they're writing substantive procedures in the exam. You should not write check this or check that or check this particular source document or check this particular recalculation, etc. Okay, folks, it should not be mentioned. Rather, I would say use the word, say specifically state the action verb here. If you're planning on recalculating something, then do that. Uh, if you're planning on reviewing the particular document, then uh, specifically state that, okay? Because check is a vague term, isn't it? It does not specifically mention as to what exactly are we doing with a particular document. If you're reviewing or inspecting a document, then we understand that we're looking for some words or terminologies within that particular document, isn't it? If you're recalculating it, then we know that we're mathematically recalculating something, isn't it? However, if you're checking something, what does that mean? No idea, right? So that's basically the issue here. Okay, folks, the examiner does not like vague procedures or vague terms used in the exam. So if you're writing your answer, then specifically mention as to what exactly do you mean. Okay, folks, and try to avoid the word check from your answer. 
unless if you're using the term sequential checks or things like that. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. And of course, yeah, the second aspect to it is that you should not provide generic and vague answers. Okay, folks, so remember that. Specifically mention as to what you're intending to mention. Okay, folks, so remember that. You should not arrive late in the exam hall. That's kind of an obvious thing, isn't it? So we should be on time so that we can attend the exam with a peace of mind. Okay, folks, so remember that. Spend too much time reading the scenario. Don't do that, okay, folks? And of course, how exactly can we avoid this? As a preventive measure of this particular issue happening, what you can do is you can practice a lot of questions, isn't it? Practice a lot of questions, try to read through scenarios, understand the scenarios and increase this particular activity so that you won't spend too much time reading the requirement, okay, folks? You should be able to identify all the things that is relevant from the scenario by reading it only once, okay, folks? And how can you develop the skill? By practicing more questions, okay, folks? So remember that. And finally, bring calculator that uh, can store, display, or display tester formulas or smartwatches, okay, folks? This particular uh, item should also be considered. You should not bring any sort of smartwatches to the exam or bring any sort of calculators that has the ability to store or display text because that's not allowed in the exam. Okay, folks, so remember that. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, calculators are available within the CBE environment itself, both scientific and standard. However, we don't need the scientific one, isn't it? We just need the standard uh, calculator to do the ratio calculations or even the materiality calculations, isn't it? So that's basically it. Okay, folks, so that's basically all the do's and don'ts for you audit and assurance exam okay folks and of course don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you can get more informative content that's all what i want to cover in this session if you have any more questions feel free to shoot them within the comment section okay folks so stay tuned for more videos this is vishnu vijay signing off for now